Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and with incredible excitement, lovely greetings from Antarctica. <laughs> Other aviation YouTubers sit in the comfort of their home. I fly to Antarctica to record this video for you about this stunning looking plane in the background, the Basler BT-67. And I know what you're thinking. I've seen this plane before. Isn't that a Douglas DC-3? You are very right. This one here is an original DC-3 that was remanufactured and modified by the company Basler. So we'll be looking at the major modifications Basler has done to the DC-3, perform a outside check and show you a takeoff and landing with skis and have a chat with the pilot who operates this stunning looking plane in the remoteness of Antarctica. So let's touch base with the Basler Turbo Conversions, which is a company based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, founded in 1990, solely focusing on the conversion of existing C-47 airframes, better known as the DC-3, into BT-67 Baslers. Now, very basically speaking, if you have an old DC-3 in the back of your garden, <laughs> Basler will custom configure each new build to your specifications. For example, for cargo operations, cloud seeding, scientific research, military operations, as the Colombian Air Force does, or White Desert asks for two with skis plus a cargo and passenger cabin interior. Now, visually, the most obvious difference is the replacement of the two classic Pratt & Whitney radial engines with two new Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6 turboprop engines. Now, as the DC-3 is entirely stripped from its guts, Basler also lengthens the fuselage just forward of the wings to improve the aircraft's interior space, which adds 30% more cabin capacity. And at the same time, they strengthen the airframe so it can cope with the added power coming from the turboprop engines. Another visual difference you might spot is that they made modifications to the wing tips. They removed the original rounded tips to more aerodynamic angled ones. Now, all this work is done in hand house by Basler's team of highly skilled metal workers. Then they completely remove the aged analog instruments and upgrade the cockpit with the latest in navigation, communication and avionic systems that bring the plane up to the level of even the most modern airliners. An important modification you can't see are the fuel tanks. Now the two PT6 engines have a slightly higher fuel consumption than the classic Pratt & Whitney radial engines. So if if you would keep the standard fuel tanks the DC-3 came with, you reduce your range from the original 1160 to 950 nautical miles. Therefore, Basler provides a long-range fuel tank which nearly doubles the original range to 2140 nautical miles. And you can fly that range 30 knots faster, cruising at 210 knots compared to the 180 knots of the old DC-3. Speaking of of flying, I was able to get a quick interview with Charles, one of the pilots flying this incredible machine. So let's hear what he has to say about the operation here in Antarctica for White Desert. How much is actually left of the DC-3 in a Basler? In terms of like hydraulics, is that still the same as yeah. this one DC-3? Yeah, okay. so the hydraulic pumps are obviously... Renewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but uh, no, the hydraulic system is pretty much the same. Okay, cool. Fuel yeah. system? Uh, fuel systems all changed, so it's, yeah. I think they keep the inboard tanks and then they added outboard tanks as well, just to double the fuel capacity, because it burns okay. more fuel than the piston engine, all right. mm -hmm. but the engine itself is lighter, so it, it all offsets. Right. Yeah. All right. nice. Charles, this being your sort of temporary home base here yeah. at Wolfsfang Airport, what are sort of the biggest challenges for you as a Basler pilot in this incredibly cold environment? Um, obviously the weather, it's, it's pretty unpredictable. Yeah. Um, because like in Europe, you have a lot of stations reading pressure. They can build a pretty good model. Down yeah. here, there's a lot less. So the forecasting is a lot harder. So you never okay. really know exactly what you're going to get. Okay. Um, and then actually flying wise, flat light is a little bit tricky. You have to be really careful. Your rad alt is okay. kind of your primary reference for that. When it's okay. flat, it's like if you're skiing, you can't really tell where the bumps are. Yeah. As you're coming yeah. into land, it's a lot harder to tell where the ground is. So you really want to it's more shallow descent than you typically would do. All right. Okay. Um, it's about one and a half degree rather than three degree. Speaking of the landings, um, I heard you guys speak on the frequency to your, let's say, 
tower control or the yeah. guy on ground, if it's safe to land with wheels or with skis. Yeah. So what gives you a reason to not extend the skis? So here's a good example. It's all groomed blue ice, mm -hmm. and that's really hard, but it can also be really slippery. Okay. So you, the skis don't have much friction. The wheels actually have a bit more friction, and you're not worried about sinking in, so you don't okay. need to spread the load out at all, spread okay. the weight out. So that's what the skis are for, for snow, Yeah. where you would sink in. Here you're not going to sink in, and the wheels add a bit more traction. And I, yeah, so I guess also in terms of taxing, it's much easier to taxi with the wheels. Oh, yeah, than yeah. You have a bit of brake once you go slower, and yeah. with the skis... On blue ice, it would be very, very slippery. Very, very yeah. Slippery, yeah. Is that part of your Canadian crew? Yeah, those are the twin otter pilots. They're they're mangy. <laughs> okay, how many people does it need to operate the Basler? Uh, typically, we have two pilots and an engineer slash flight attendant. Oh, so okay. mm -hmm. all of our engineers do flight attendant training because yeah. when you're carrying passengers, it requires a flight attendant. And then if we're just running fuel or something, yeah. We can go two pilots, but generally it's nice to have an engineer. We have spares on board the airplane because if you have to change a starter okay. or something out there, it's it's an expensive flight to go <laughs> yeah. rescue. It's better if we just have the guy and his tools and a nice. few spares on board. But when this Arctic summer comes to an end, the Basla will go back to Canada. Well, what is it used for when it's in Canada? So these ones, they typically do cargo up okay. in northern Ontario um, to the uh, reserves. So kind of more remote communities. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you just dismantle the skis yeah. and then just head out again? Yeah, we typically take the skis off either in Rothera, which is a British base on the Antarctic Peninsula, okay, yeah. or Punta Chile, Punta Arenas, Chile. Is it actually a type rating or just a class rating to get on? Uh, it's a type rating. It's a that. type rating? Yeah, yeah. How long yeah. does that take? We, we don't do it in the sim. We do it all on wing. So no way. there's ground school okay. um, and then... The flying portion, I think, is just uh, about five to seven hours. All right. Charles, thank you yeah. so much for your no time. No problem. Really, thank you. Really appreciate yeah. it. And safe flying. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, thanks a lot. You too. You too. It was an absolute pleasure speaking to Charles. Super cool dude and incredibly professional. He made me even consider to take six months sabbatical and then fly their Baslers in Canada or Antarctica. I'll let that sink in for a moment, but for now, just enjoy these incredible views. So we are now on our Basler BT-67 heading towards Atka Bay to see the Emperor Penguins. It's roughly a two and a half hour flight from Witchaway, which is our base. It's an absolutely amazing experience flying this route with this converted DC-3. This plane even comes with a toilet situated at the back of the plane. It is pretty nippy back there, but how often do you get to go to the loo in the tail of a DC-3. What's so mind-blowing to me, but that these planes, built in the 1940s, refurbished in the 2000s, are still flying today, makes this trip so much more special, in my opinion. And I have to admit, from an aviation standpoint, this is next level. Flying a Basler or a muscled-up DC-3 on skis over Antarctica, unpressurized obviously at minus 20 degrees outside temperature to go and see penguins you're ticking off a whole lot of yeah buddy boxes in one flight see you on the ground So, yet again, a, another change in scenery. We are now at a fuel depot. So we just came in here to refuel the plane. This is basically where most of the fuel for White Desert and other companies and research facilities, etc., is stored. What is also really amazing is there's actually a team of people that kind of live here just at the fuel depot, and they sleep in tents. I kid you not. I mean... <laughs> That is grueling, but they say they're happy to, you know, to stay here, wait for the plane come in and out. And there's a boat that is bringing all the fuel in and it has a massive crane that goes all the way up of the cliff of the ice 
then then they bring all these containers there and then refuel their containers. The logistics behind this is just absolutely amazing. So again, onwards, back to which way and uh, off we go. White Desert also chose the Baslers as they are the most reliable and fuel efficient planes for their type of operation to keep it as sustainable as possible. And piston driven planes are just no match for the harsh Arctic weather. The biggest surprise to me and probably also the reason why the Baslers are so sought after is the weight and payload. Although the added fuselage length, the Baslers only weighs 16,000 pounds compared to the heavier DC-3 with 17,800 pounds, most of the weight coming from the radial engines. And due to the strengthening of the fuselage and added power, the Basler can carry 5,000 pounds more in payload. Those are the primary reasons what sets the BT-67 apart from other turboprop aircraft. With these enhancements, she has the ability to operate in conditions usually too hostile for planes of its kind to operate safely. Now, to give you an example, if you wanted to safely fly to the South Pole and back, White Desert and their two beautiful Baslers will take you there. It is a 14 hours round trip with two fuel stops for safety reason, obviously, and a brief layover at Dixie Camp at 83 degrees south, during which you'll experience temperatures from minus 25 to minus 35 degrees. So you can leave your flip-flops at home for that trip. Now, your immediate thought is, why not fly with a jet? It's much faster and pressurized. Call me if you can show me a jet that comes with skis and can land on snow, as there is no tarmac runway at the South Pole, only a short skiway. And that's why the Baslers are the right plane to take you to one of the remotest places on Earth. I'd like to finish this video with a great statement by Basler Turbo Conversions. Our DC-3 overhaul is so substantial that the completed airframe shows zero accumulated fatigue damage. So in short, our BT-67s should be ready for another 90 years of flying. And that makes me smile, knowing that 68 DC-3s they have already converted and many more are to come, that we'll be seeing the silhouette of a DC-3 for many more years. And on that bombshell, a huge thank you to White Desert for bringing me out here and letting me experience this incredible plane. If you are up for an Arctic expedition and you want to get flown to your camp in a Basler or a Twin Otter on skis, check out their website and book your trip today. As I am standing here right now, I can guarantee you it will be a trip of your lifetime. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check, and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.